Hello, I'm Sandy Patel. I'm a research assistant with Dr. Teal's office. I've probably met many of you before, and I hope to see you again at this year's virtual conference or meet you for the first time there. So the presentation I'll be giving today is on the open label study we're conducting at MGH, looking at the treatment with penfluorine hydrochloride in epilepsy patients with sunflower syndrome. So why penfluorine? As many of you know, the epilepsy associated with sunflower is often refractory to our current available anti-convulsive medication. And non-medical interventions, such as hats and sunglasses, while beneficial, never alone lead to seizure freedom. When we look at the medical literature, we encountered a few reports on the successful use of fluoramine to treat patients with photosensitive epilepsy. One of these reports included at least one patient whose description matched that of sunflower syndrome. In addition, there's a group of Gervais syndrome patients in Belgium who remained on who remained on even after it was removed from the market in 1997 due to potential cardiac toxicity. And so this group of patients uh, really represent a long-term data set on the potential beneficial use of pemphormine to treat epilepsy. So when taken together, uh, this kind of indicated to us that uh, pemphormine might be a medication option for sunflower patients. So with any study that looks at a potential medication option, there are uh, certain criteria that a patient must meet in order to enroll. For this study, this uh, included that a patient must have carried a diagnosis of sunflower syndrome and have seizures that were not completely controlled by their current treatment plan. Patients must have also been between the ages of four and 25 years old and experienced an average of six or more tonic-clonic seizures or hand waving episodes per week. In addition, a patient's medication and interventions for epilepsy must have been stable for at least five, five, four weeks, uh, excuse me, prior to enrollment, um, and were expected to remain stable until the end of the course study period. Um, and this was really so uh, to ensure that any changes to the interventions would not affect uh, the results that we saw from fenfluramine. In addition, due to the past history of fenfluramine, uh, being taken off the market due to uh, potential cardiac toxicity, patients with a history of cardiovascular disease were excluded from the study. Looking at the study design, uh, the initial four month core period included five monthly study visits. This included a baseline period prior to treatment during, with, during which patients uh, would record the frequency and duration of the hand-waving episodes on seizure logs provided to them. The patients would continue to record the frequency and duration of these hand-waving episodes uh, after starting treatment um, and while they titrated up and were maintained on their maximum dose. And so the seizure logs uh, really provided us with the data that we needed uh, to see whether the uh, fenfluramine had an effect uh, on the, the hand-waving episodes that these patients experienced uh, when we looked at the, the frequency and duration uh, that we, uh, the patients uh, experienced during the baseline period uh, and during the post-treatment phase. Uh, and so to remain uh, consistent, we defined the hand-waving episode as the period uh, starting from when the patient's hand comes up towards their face and until there's a brief pause in air waving. With regard to the study medication, uh, it was administered twice daily during the study um, and the starting dose uh, was 0.2 milligrams per kilogram per day for the first 14 days and then the dose would be increased by 0.2 milligrams per kilogram per day every two weeks until a maximum dose of either 0.8 milligrams per kilogram per day or 30 milligrams per day was reached. And the patient was then maintained on that maximum dose for the duration of the study, unless it was not well tolerated. And so in regard to the outcomes we were looking at, uh, primarily we we're looking at the reduction uh, in hand-waving episodes or any other seizure types that a patient experienced. In addition to that, uh, we were interested in looking at uh, 
the behavioral health uh, of sunflower patients. And so we did administer certain assessments to uh, kind of look at the cognitive and executive functioning of patients, as well as their quality of life. Lastly, we did look, uh, we did have patients uh, record EEGs um, and looked at the characteristics of the EEGs to see whether fenfluramine had any effect. So this is just a, an outline of the study, study schedule, and we can look at that briefly, or um, you can pause the, the slides if you want to look at it in more detail. Um, so as you can see, there was an initial five-month uh, core study period. And then during the study, uh, because of the potential cardiac toxicity, we had the patients uh, receive echocardiograms or EKGs uh, to ensure that there was no effect of fenfluramine on their cardiac function. Uh, and as you can see, after the initial five study visits, uh, there was uh, an extension period uh, during which patients were seen every three or six months um, while on treatment. And, and patients would uh, continue on to this uh, extension phase if they received benefit from fenfluramine. So looking at the results, for our first cohort of patients, uh, we had enrolled eight female and two male patients. There was one patient who withdrew, who withdrew from the study uh, due to developing a rash only three days after starting the study drug. Uh, while we do not believe that the rash was uh, study drug related, uh, the patient decided not to continue with the study. The average age of patients at enrollment was slightly above 13 years. Um, and patient, there are seven patients who had a history of absence seizures with eye flooding or staring. Um, and five, uh, six patients, excuse me, uh, with a history of tonic-clonic seizures. With regard to prior um, anticonvulsive treatments, patients had an average of two and a half uh, prior treatments. Uh, and with regard to current or concomitant treatments, uh, patients uh, were on slightly below two uh, medications or interventions at uh, time of enrollment. So looking at uh, the results uh, with regard to hand-waving episodes during the core study period, um, so that was uh, three months of uh, study drug treatment, uh, patients achieved 79% uh, median reduction in hand-waving episodes. Um, as you can see that at baseline, there was, uh, patients had a, a median of 50, almost 50, 56 hand-waving episodes per day. And then at the end of the core period, uh, that had reduced to a median of nine episodes per day. And so during these studies, uh, looking at epilepsy, uh, patients are qualified as responders when they achieve at least 30% reduction in seizure frequency. And so you can see that eight of the nine patients who remained on study drug uh, qualified as responders. And then looking even further than that, um, there was still a number of patients who uh, achieved a seizure reduction beyond that, um, including 33% or three of the nine patients who had a greater than 90% reduction in seizure frequency. And so looking at, uh, this is just looking uh, for each individual patient. Uh, these are graphs that kind of show you the, the seizure frequency during the core study period. Um, and so you can see for each patient on the left side, um, there's charted uh, their seizure or hand-waving episodes per, uh, per day. And then along the bottom, you can see the different time points. Uh, from baseline to month three of treatment. Um, and so you can see for the majority of patients, there was a reduction um, in hand-waving episodes that they experienced uh, throughout the course study period. So with regard to other seizure types, um, again, there were seven patients with history of absence seizures. Um, and three of these patients recorded frequency during uh, baseline period. And so we were able to compare uh, to their post-treatment frequency. 
And two of these patients did experience a significant decrease uh, after starting treatment. Uh, and with regard to tonic-clonic seizures, again, there were six patients with a reported history of tonic-clonic seizures. Um, and four of the, these patients had at least one uh, tonic-clonic during the one year prior to study enrollment. And so during the core study period, there was one patient who experienced a tonic-clonic seizure uh, approximately 10 days after starting treatment uh, and did not experience any other after that during the core study period. Um, and no other patient had a tonic-clonic during this course study period. So looking at the one-year follow-up, um, we saw that efficacy was maintained for at least for five of the nine patients who, who had completed the, the course study and made, were maintained on the study drug for at least a little time after uh, this course study. And while we did not require uh, patients to continue to record uh, frequency and duration of seizures following the course study, uh, this efficacy data was uh, obtained through qualitative means by just uh, conversational and follow up with the patient and during a one year study visit. So two of these patients did have less efficacy um, after initially uh, seeing improvement on treatment, but they they did continue on fenfluramine despite the less efficacy. Um, and again, that's just less than efficacy. They still, compared to their baseline prior to treatment, uh, still saw an improvement. And then the, the other two patients who had remained on fenfluramine for some time after the course study um, decided to taper off um, due to lack of efficacy. Um, and so beyond just the seizure frequency, we saw that there were many patients who reported feeling less drawn to light after starting treatment, um, although there was one patient who reported being more drawn to light. Um, and then with regard to tonic-clonic seizures, um, there was three patients who had tonic-clonic during the follow-up period um, after the course study. Um, however, we did see that the frequency of tonic-clonic tonic -clonic seizures uh, was significantly lessened uh, post-treatment with fenfluramine. For example, there was one patient who had a cluster of uh, tonic clonics um, several months after the course started period, um, but had been having one to two uh, episodes per month prior to treatment. So this represented a definite improvement in this, uh, seizure frequency. And so with regard to adverse events, uh, we saw that the most common that were thought to be related to fenfluramine or loss of appetite and fatigue. And we, we see that um, five and four patients respectively experienced those events. Um, and then there were other events that um, we did not think were related to the study drug, but were noted nonetheless, including uh, allergies, concussion, uh, and diarrhea. Um, importantly though, uh, there were no patients who developed any evidence of cardiac involvement uh, or adverse effects during this, uh, during the treatment period. So conclusions. So really what this uh, first cohort of patients indicated to us was that fenfluramine is a possible adjunct of treatment uh, that resulted in significant clinically meaningful reduction in frequency of hand waving episodes. Um, and again, as you saw from the adverse event data, fenfluramine was well tolerated with minimal side effects. Um, and uh, while there is no uh, real correlation that we can make uh, between seizure improvement and the EEG characteristics that we saw or the cognitive assessments that we made, um, this is really due to study limitations, uh, the number of patients enrolled and so again, as though this was a small core of patients uh, with sunflower syndrome, uh, we think that fenfluramine could be an effective and well tolerated treatment option for these patients. And we are currently uh, in the process of enrolling a second core of patients, uh, but we have not completed enrollment. Uh, and the, the patients that we have initially enrolled in that second cohort uh, have not seen as much efficacy as our first 
cohort, uh, but uh, the majority are still seeing some improvement on the floor bead. Um, so that's uh, the end of my presentation. And, uh, you know, I hope if you have any questions on the, the presentation, uh, we can certainly talk about it during the virtual conference. So thank you again.